This is a question on atomic structure. I'm going to recommend you work your way through all of the key parts of it. And once you've tried each answer, you can go through and review. So here's part A, part B, part C, and finally part D. Okay, so we'll take a look at part A to begin with. And we've got subatomic particles, um, three different isotopes of magnesium, with mass numbers of 24, 25, and 26 respectively. And we want to know what the difference between the three isotopes is. Now you can't say that it's a different mass number because the question clearly states it's got to be in relation to subatomic particles. So all you need to say is that they have different numbers of neutrons. You could be specific and say they've got 12, 13, and 14 respectively, but not necessary. Either of those would get the mark. Moving on to part B, do we think the chemical properties of these isotopes will differ and what's the reason for your answer? The chemical properties will be the same and the reason for that is that they have got the same electronic structure. And remember, when magnesium reacts, it loses its two outer electrons. That's impacted on by attraction to the nucleus and shielding, nothing to do with the number of neutrons. On to what's quite a common calculation here, one of the more complicated mass spectra calculations. We know that we have 24, 25 and 26 as the three different isotopes of magnesium. We're only told the percentage by mass of magnesium 25. So what we need to do is use X. And you can see here that what we've got, the overall AR is 24.3. If I say that X is the percentage of magnesium 24, and I know that it's 10% of magnesium 25, then my percentage of magnesium 26 is 90. That's taking into account the 10% of magnesium 25. Take away X, and that's multiplied by 26. Now I'm going to rearrange that. Uh, <clears throat> we multiply both sides by 100, and we end up doing this. We also expand the brackets here. And once we've expanded the brackets, we can rearrange. And what we find is that negative 160 is negative 2x. Now that means that 2x is 160, so x equals 80. If x is 80, and that's the percentage of magnesium 24, and we know it's 10% magnesium 25, that leaves 10% of magnesium 26. Moving on to part D, and again, a very common question. You'll always be provided with the kinetic energy equation, but you will need to work through to get to the um, answers, and it will be rearranged in different ways, depending on what the final answer is. So first of all, we need to know what the mass of an atom of magnesium 25 plus is. And you can see here, I've done mass divided by Avogadro's, however, that would give me the mass in grams, and we need the mass in kilograms. So I'm going to divide that 25 by 1,000. Now what I can then do is rearrange to make V the subject. I've got V squared is 2Ke over M, and I'm making V root 2Ke over M, therefore. And that's because we need the velocity so we can use the distance velocity time equation to work out the distance and therefore the length of the tube. Now from here, I can put those figures in, the kinetic energy was provided, and my M I've transferred straight over from the calculation I did at the beginning. You could have worked out a value for that and put it in, either way works. Um, this just allows me to not lose anything in the rounding. But obviously, that's the square root. So we don't forget that at this point. Now that takes me to a velocity of 1.48 by 10 to the minus five meters per second. I'm now gonna use my distance velocity time equation. I'm gonna multiply that by the time of flight, which is in seconds. That takes me to a distance of 2.13 meters.